I'm testing new gears for my 8 day clock. Hey guys, Jacques here. I wanted to test some other gears for my 8 day clock that has been going on for about a month now without stopping. Well, just rewind it once once a week. <laughs> That's it. So it's going pretty good. I'm going to put the files on my mini factory pretty soon. Also wanted to test other gears like a cycloid gear. That's the tooth profile I have now. Uh, involute. I want to try cycloid. You can see the difference. And with the cycloid for the pinion I have two options. One is a lantern gear with pins like this. Other option is a cycloid pinion and since it's a pinion that driven by a big gear it's a cycloid with rounded ends. You can see it better in this animation in FreeCAD. So in this view I have both. I have the pins on top of the pinion. So you can see how the gear engaged pinion a little bit before the line of contact. And then it pushes then the gear pushes the pinion quite past the line of contact. So my goal is to build three clocks. This one has the involute gears and then two more. One with the cycloid gear with the pinion 3D printed and one the cycloid gear with the lantern pinion with the steel pins. And I want to compare and see which one is the more the most efficient. I believe the lantern gear might be a little bit better than this one and then the cycloid is going to be somewhere in between. And the way I'm going to see the efficiency is driven with the same weight. This is 3.5 kilo for 8 days with a pulley and I'm going to measure the swing of the pendulum and see which one will swing the pendulum the most. <laughs> okay, here is a Swiss lever escapement. Here I have a detent escapement using the chronometers. So at some point I'll do some demo version of those escapement and maybe just using a spring driven so it's easier than having them on the wall but I'm still trying to find a way to do the spiral spring and I've been reading about the carbon fiber epoxy composite springs and I'm trying uh, and thinking of doing a a mold like this and then putting the carbon fiber in uh, and then there's a top part so it presses it 
I'm not quite sure it's going to work. And then the other thing is it's probably going to be too stiff because carbon fiber has pretty much power volume it's roughly the same uh, stiffness as spring steel. This small is 0 0.6 gap, so it probably too stiff. So that's a rather long work in progress to get to where, where it can be done. The reason I'm trying this is because those 3D printed springs in PLA just that doesn't work. They just creep down. They work for testing, but over time, no. <laughs> there's quite a few people say, "Oh, just make a a jig to shape a spiral spring like this." It doesn't work with uh, st uh, spring steel. It's not that easy. I've tried, but it starts really tight, and then it goes too big, too quick. It only works with the cylindrical spring like those. And even though this is what I use for this spring, the spring doubles in size pretty much. So yeah, there's a reason why it's so hard to find information on the making of spear spring. There's good info on the old on the old way to do it, but the modern ones it's quite secretive. I have the goal to make this watch half the size. So I need to find a way that I can scale down the making of this spring here. And this one has been sitting for a bit of time, so still kind of work. But doing this half the size. It's going to be an interesting challenge. And for that, I end up getting a Prusa Mini clone. So I had to print all the PTG parts, and that was also an, ex an experiment. But I must say, Prusa knows 3D printing. <laughs> uh, it gave me a better perspective on how to design parts for printing for. 3D printing, so that was quite interesting. It was an interesting experience. It also made me use more Prusa Slicer. It's pretty good for slicing files. So that's it for this week. A lot of interesting things, at least for me. Okay, so if you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.